Hey everybody, uh, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, today is the uh, 22nd of May. Uh, I just did a uh, flight control firmware upgrade and test with the Hubson Zeno. Well, uh, here I am back a day later. Uh, this morning I got up and I saw that they, uh, that they updated the uh, uh, the, the FPV firmware, the camera firmware. Hubson released a new firmware uh, version, camera FPV firmware version. They went from 0, uh, 0.3.5 to 0 0.3.6. And interestingly enough, uh, what that did was, uh, they, they're, what they're saying in the release notes is it resolved the issue upon disconnection at range. So we're going to check that uh, again today and see how it works. As you probably have already seen my my video that I made yesterday, we were successful in uh, the, uh, the, the the Zeno RTHing and and coming back upon disconnection. Now I also lost FPV. It did not turn around until the FPV uh, disconnected. So I suspect that that's what they're speaking to here, and they tweaked that somehow. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna get it up there and find out. The other thing that happened to us yesterday uh, is we noticed the drone sinking upon forward flight, uh, and and so we'll take a look at that again. And then also uh, when the drone was coming back and returned to home yesterday. Uh, it was crabbing significantly, so I was able to see that, uh, but I didn't, wasn't able to get a camera on it. So I'm gonna, if we see that again today, I'm gonna try and get a, the camera looking at the drone so that, so that you can see that. I hope I can get that done. Uh, and then uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh yeah, well I mean, as we take off here, we'll look for the Hubson drop, but of course that looks like that was resolved. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's quit messing around. Let's uh, get this thing in the air. Okay, so uh, it looks like uh, we're ready to go here. Motors are locked. Uh, we got 15 satellites. Uh, everything looks good. I did uh, all the calibrations, including just a compass calibration and, of course, a, uh, a GPS accuracy test. Uh, so uh, let me, uh, it is cloudy today. Let me switch it over to uh, video, take a look at our settings in video. Looks like we got a lot of stuff coming through. I should have turned off notifications, but too late to mess with that now. We're on cloudy day. Uh, I'm going to start video on the uh, drone itself, and uh, I'm saying uh, let's do a takeoff. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera down here so you can get a little view and look for the uh, uh, watch this takeoff. So uh, I did it last time on the on the controller. Let's do it here on the app. And it says, you sure you want to take off? Yes, we do. All right. So uh, there we go. Really no, uh, no discernible uh, drop there, which is good. So let's, uh, I'm just going to uh, take the drone out a little ways and we'll do it. Uh, well, now it's dropping. So you guys are seeing that. I am not touching the controls. Uh, and, and that coincided with a little breeze that came up. Now we've seen that before. The barometer in the Xeno is affected by the wind and that little bit of breeze caused it to drop a little bit. But anyway, it's, uh, that's no big deal really. Uh, yeah, so you, we're getting significant wind now and it's moving around. Uh, you, as long as you're aware of that, it's something that's easy to cope with. I don't see it as a big issue. But anyway, let's go, let's go up and out a little ways. Uh, we uh, we'll, and we'll test the return to home. Okay, that was uh, that was pretty aggressive there, guys. But uh, anyway, we're far enough that we can test the return to home. And what we want to do, what I'm doing there, is making sure that the we the drone knows where home is. Uh, and it's easier to do it uh, here to the takeoff point. So here it comes. And <laughs> it is, uh, 
yeah, it, it took it a second to straighten out. It kind of moved sideways, and then it uh, straightened out, and it's coming home. So, uh, so I'll let it get down in altitude here a little bit, and uh, I did speed up the uh, uh, the uh, gimbal speed a little bit here since the last time we flew. So I'm going to cancel here. It's coming down, and it actually looks pretty darn accurate. But let's cancel, and it'll go into GPS hold. Picking the gimbal back up, kind of uh, going by the rule of thirds here. Really nice uh, 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 horizon there, perfectly, uh, perfectly, uh, just the way we want it. So I'm pointed out to that uh, kind of the uh, the direction uh, that we uh, often go uh, when we're uh, looking. Uh, I, I see the I see the drone is is yawing a little bit and that's with no input now what's interesting there is I was looking at the FPV and it looked like it was yawing but I was up looking straight up at the drone and I didn't see any movement on the drone so so could that have been the gimbal I suppose I, I don't know uh, but in any case uh, let's uh, I'm going to there's one other thing I want to change because I want to get a, a uh, the, the uh, return altitude I've got set at 45 meters I'm going to change that to uh, 20. There we go. So it looks like we've got it set to 20. And the reason I'm doing that this time is I want to be able to get a picture of that yaw when it's coming back. Normally I, I set it at about 45 meters. I like it way up there. Uh, but, but 20 meters is, uh, is enough that it's going to clear everything we're looking at here. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'll probably edit some of this out. I'm going to move it back up a little bit higher. We're going to go to 30. Sorry guys, I'm just a little bit of a chicken, so I, I just want to make sure it's high enough. Okay, let's go. 63% uh, battery. I've wasted a lot of battery messing around here, so. So I got significant yaw there when I took off. So that's me changing that yaw just then. Yeah, sorry, I should have shut off notifications there, guys. We're getting a lot of notifications. I, I just posted that other video, but uh, glad to see people interested in it. We're out at almost 500 meters. Going out over the field here. 700 meters. Well, I'm going to turn it more directly out over the field. I, uh, 800 meters. And we're going to get there. Yeah, aircraft disconnected. The last thing I had is 855 meters. So I'm off the sticks now. Uh, we still have FPV. Uh, yeah, now we just lost FPV. So did they do that, something with that on a timer or something? Is the aircraft coming back at this point? We, we don't know. Uh, I'm trying to keep, yeah, here it comes. Yeah, and it's coming back to us. It's, uh, so it went into GPS hold. So that's interesting because one of the things that people said was that as soon as it regained connection, it would continue I, I, I read that on one of the forum or one of the on Facebook. I think somebody said that they thought, well, it would just continue to return to home. It does not. It goes into GPS hold, which I believe is what it, you want it to do. So I'm going to go ahead. I've, I've got control of the drone again here. We didn't get the distance that we have in the past, but I'm going to hit return to home, uh, return to takeoff point, and uh, and then let's let's see. Uh, how much uh, if it uh, and it's in return home mode and it'll be interesting to see uh, the vector of the drone as it comes back to us yeah so I'm disconnected again so that's interesting yeah no it's now it's showing in return mode and it is coming back to us I am going to uh, try and uh, see if I can uh, get that on the camera here as it gets in range and see if we can see uh, how much it's actually uh, it's see if we can see how much it's actually uh, uh, 
cr uh, the camera is pointed off vector or crabbing. So as soon as we get it close enough that I can see it with the camera. Okay, there's the drone. Should see it in the top part of the screen there. It actually, uh, it actually is not as bad this time as it was yesterday. So it's above us now, and uh, let's just go ahead and let it land here. Let's uh, let's see how close it lands. We're at 40% battery. And it looks pretty darn close, guys. It looks pretty darn close. Now you'll see it on the screen any second here. Okay, here we go. Well, look at that. Man, I'm stoked, guys. That thing hit the landing pad right on the money, and it was out at max range. Uh, so, I, I'm, what we can say, uh, it's essentially the same result that I had yesterday on the return to home. It, it, uh, it lost uh, the control signal, and and but I still had FPV for a little while or at least FPV was frozen so I don't know so then but then as soon as it lost FPV signal which was just momentarily and I suspect that that is something they built into the software that's my suspicion I I'm not a technician I don't know it's what I think uh, but as soon as that happened it turned around and started coming home and then as soon as it regained connection with the controller it went into GPS hold which I think that's what you want it to do because you might be out there filming something and you're in that direction. You wouldn't want it to come all the way back to you and then have to turn around and go back out. Now, I then initiated uh, the completion of the return to home and uh, you know, it came back here and landed right on the landing pad. So uh, we got a little bit of battery left here. We're down to 40% battery. So let's take off again. And uh, as you recall yesterday, uh, we saw it uh, sink quite a bit upon uh, a forward pitch. Uh, it did not seem to do it on a reverse pitch. So I don't know, let's just test it out a little bit here and see how she does. So uh, so I'm gonna, it's, uh, well shoot, I'm just gonna take it off where it sits here, guys. So there we are. Uh, the uh, the drone is uh, there's no wind right now, so it's steady as a rock. It's just sitting right there. So that's me dropping it now. Let's spin it around here. Give me just a second. I'm, let's see if we can get it uh, in front of the camera here a little more. Okay, I'm thinking that's a pretty good view. Okay, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go full stick straight forward And let's see if it sinks like it did uh, yesterday And it did I, I curved off there a little bit inadvertently, but yeah, it, it was sinking so uh, so I don't know what that's all about So uh, I'm going to go out just a little bit, a little bit more, see if I can see it on the screen here. So, so then what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to drop it down just a touch. Let's go, let's go full reverse stick and see what happens. And yesterday it was perfectly, it stayed perfectly at altitude when I did that. So full reverse. So you guys couldn't see that on camera, but it, it sank just a little bit. Unfortunately, I got a little bit of a uh, curve there when I was doing it. 
I'm telling you guys, I'm not the best pilot. I struggle. I struggle to keep the joystick straight. There's others that probably would be much better at doing these tests than I am. But let's try it again. We're at 33%. Let's just uh, full reverse there. Wow, I tell you what, this thing is, uh, it's not the easiest to control. I mean, you can, it's, it's doing a little bit of that circular motion that we've seen before. I'll take, I'll take responsibility for my uh, less than ideal pilot skills, but let me, let me get it back in front here. That's me dropping it down. But see how it's doing a little bit of a circle? Just a gentle little circle there. And that's with no, no nothing on the control. That makes it really hard to do the fine controls. And that's why I tell everybody with this drone, this is not a drone that you're going to want to be picking your way through the trees with. You're just not. It, it just does not have that kind of stability. And I doubt it ever will. And that's not a criticism. It doesn't have any kind of optical flow or any other sensors, as I've said many times. Uh, but it, it, it is something that you need to be aware of uh, when you fly this drone. So. But it's a phenomenal camera drone and, and takes some phenomenal uh, pictures. I'm saying keep it up higher, keep it up out of the trees, and that's where this drone is at its best. If you really, if you want something more stable, boy, uh, you need to buy a DJI Spark, probably would be the one in this price range, uh, even though it has less battery time and, and uh, 1080p, although I'd argue that that 1080p footage on that Spark is phenomenal. Anyway, so. Let's, uh, let's go up just a little, and we're going to go forward again. Full stick forward. We're going to try that one more time. So that time it didn't, it didn't dive nearly as bad. Well, it's fun to watch it put on the brake. So, you know, normally you're not going to be, uh, normally you wouldn't be uh, uh, flying this close to the ground. Uh, anyway, I'm going to raise it up just a little and let's do, let's do full reverse. So it, as I let off the throttle, it sunk there a little bit. So it just, it seems to me that that behavior hasn't changed. and. I, I doubt if it ever will. That, like I said, that is a function of the barometer. Full forward coming to us. And boy, as soon as I let off the throttle there, it does a big circle. I mean, that's just, it's just a function of this drone. So let's see, we are down to 23%. I'm gonna back it off here. Let's let it, uh, let's, let's see if it'll go into uh, return to home mode. I'm sorry guys, it's, I, I, I'm having a tough time seeing the uh, FPV on my phone. I'm not in any shade. There we are. Spinning around here a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to let it do an F, go into FPV mode and, and see if it'll land on its own. Yeah, it did it just now. It just took off. So we're going to let it land. Uh, but in conclusion, I, I really don't see any changes from uh, the, uh, the, the, the last camera firmware version, uh, 0 0.3.5 as opposed to 0 0.3.6. Uh, uh, hey, I'm going to drop the gimbal down. Let's see how, how she's coming down. Make sure it doesn't land on my head or something while I'm talking to you. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a little bit further off this time. Maybe not. We're just going to let it land. Uh, it's almost down. So let's let's watch that. Yeah, so it's a little bit off. We're gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna stop it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna mow the grass. So let's. Uh, boy, did you see that? 
Okay, I'm gonna do a hand catch here, guys, if I can get it close enough. As you can see, that little bit of a circle, it's, it's kind of hard to control. Okay, so come down just a little. We're gonna do a hand catch. So what I do is I grab it from the side, and it's easy to grab right here. And you just hold the stick down. You hold the stick down. Let me uh, let me get the uh, the gimbal back up. So it's kind of cool watching the gimbal pick itself up. Uh, so <laughs> let's see. We talked about that it it did a return to home just like it did yesterday. I saw no differences in how it did that. So and that's perfect. That's exactly what you wanted to do. I am seeing a little bit less range than I've seen in the past, but you know who knows what that is. I. It, it still went out to almost 900 meters, which I think is is plenty. Uh, we still see the same kind of uh, low altitude. You know, you can call it instability. I'm just saying that it's a characteristic of this drone. I'm, I'm not even going to call it instability. It's just a characteristic of the way the Xeno uh, flies. And, and you just need to know that if you're flying this drone. This isn't a drone that you're going to take and you're going to fly through trees, etc. with. This is a drone you're going to take up to altitude and you're going to get some good 4K cinematic footage with it. And I guess that doesn't mean that you can't be a, somewhat lower to the ground. You can. Uh, but you need to be aware of it. You saw the little small little circle it was making there and some of those things. It just, and the flight controls, you know, you saw me messing around and and doing some inadvertent turns and yaws and stuff just because these are these flight controls are very sensitive that's kind of because this is kind of a uh, a, a toy grade controller a little bit you know maybe a step above that but not much uh, but the, you know the drone uh, people are buying this drone for uh, for 250 bucks now so what the heck uh, that, that, that's pretty good. I, I think it's a phenomenal value and I think you get a lot for your money. Uh, you just need to be aware of those things and understand what you're getting. You know, if you want something, uh, I, I think the, the next step up with this, as I've said before, I'm going to tell you is the DJI Spark. Yeah, no, you don't have the flight time, etc. But boy, oh boy, that thing has got really phenomenal uh, controls and, and is probably easier to use from the perspective of uh, upgrades, etc., uh, you don't, you know, there's nothing that you're going to get too technical on on that particular product. Uh, and you know, there's all the rumors of the Spark 2 coming out too. Of course, who knows what that price point would be. And then also, but we also need to mention the Paradinafi. Uh, you were able to recently to get a refurb on that for 445 bucks. That is a phenomenal product, and I would say it's a competitor for this drone, and it really is uh, is at a whole nother level. It's about two steps up from this product, uh, but it's not available as a refurb anymore. They sold out, so uh, the cheapest I saw that one was 570 bucks, as opposed to 250 for this one. So just keep that in mind. You're going to pay more for that functionality. The other one that's worth mentioning is the Femi X8 SE. My issues with that drone and the crash I had are, are well documented, but I'm telling you, I've flown it a couple times since then, and it, to me, appears to be a phenomenal product. There is a, a lot going on there. Uh, I've seen those. I, I paid $425 for mine, yet the price goes up and down. The list price is, is $500, but uh, you know, I've seen it anywhere from $400 to $500. So there again, it's about double the price of, uh, or not quite, of the... Uh, of the Hubson Zeno. So take, keep that in mind. Uh, I believe at its price point, the Hubson Zeno is the best product out there at its price point. If you can pick it up for under $300, and uh, I know a lot of people are getting it for uh, 250 bucks on eBay. I paid $299 for this one. Uh, so I guess that's all that needs to be said. And uh, it was, I, I guess, this is, uh, we'll have to take a look at the video footage and, and see if that FPV firmware improved anything, uh, which it typically does. They've done a phenomenal job with the camera on this drone. Uh, but, other, but as for the functionality of the drone itself, as opposed to the test I did yesterday with the new firmware version 1.1.51, 
uh, which is the same now on this. They didn't update that. I see no functionality differences at all. Uh, and uh, uh, honestly, the only difference I see over 0.50 is that return to home that it does upon disconnection that the drone will start coming back to you until you get in range again and it connects then it goes into GPS hold uh, so that's it I, I guess I didn't do any shout outs at the beginning of this video so I for sure want to do that uh, of course I got my drone seeker shirt on a shout out to my friends at the drone seekers uh, and all the rest of the Xeno testers out there there's there's a bunch of people I named them all in the last video uh, uh, man it's just phenomenal the the uh, the crowdsourcing and the work that people have done to help everybody uh, understand this product and quite frankly it makes it a viable product that it may not be otherwise so this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho quadcopter channel out and if you like this kind of content please subscribe to my channel and maybe hit that bell uh, so you get a notification when I put out a new video and, uh, you know, as I always say, I, I just really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And we'll see you on the next one.